Welcome to the Challenging the Way We Age podcast, hosted by the Mavericks of Senior Living, Francis and Catherine, focusing on creativity, ingenuity, and inspiration to educate and inspire changes in the senior experience, breaking the status quo and creating hope for the way we age. We want to thank our title sponsor during Denver Startup Week 2019, iAging. We want to thank our supporters, Assured Assisted Living, Serenity App, Sevens Home Care, Sevens Residential Memory Care, and Workability Co-working Space. Now get ready for the next episode. Good afternoon, you Mavericks. I'm Francis Legassi, your Chief Curiosity Maverick, and we are here at Workability for Denver Startup Week. We just finished a networking event on longevity economy, and I am pleased to have a fantastic guest with us today, Mr. Taylor Hewlett, who is a author that has done an incredible book called About Faces, Expressions of Alzheimer's and Dementia. And I must say, this is a book that's going to really trigger the emotions, yet the love that can be presented with such a a tragic disease. So thank you, Taylor, for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. So Taylor, tell us a little bit about the book. I think, honestly, you hit the nail on the head, for sure. Um, It's about the emotion, about the stories. Uh, There's a lot of texts out there about Alzheimer's and dementia that surround kind of the scientific of it, the diagnosis, the research, all of those things, which which is very important. But this book really gets to the emotion, the story of it. So the way this book started, I started taking photos of Applewood, our house's residence. It's a memory care facility here in Denver, Mm -hmm. and uh, as Christmas gifts. So I take a really professional portrait, um, and then frame it really nicely and hand it to the family for, for Christmas. Yeah, That's such a great memory. It was such a great, that's our philosophy at Applewood. I mean, we provide moments for our residents and memories for our families. That's and, awesome. And so that was a great memory. And then that sparked the idea of, of writing a book and telling huh. their stories. Um, these people with Alzheimer's and dementia, as you know, can't tell their stories anymore, um, which is hard. And so the family, I interviewed each family. There's six of them in this book. Huh. So six portraits, six stories. and. It's really to provide a connection for other families that are going through this as well. I mean, I can, I'm can. i sure those families, just this memory of, of mom, dad, husband, wife mm-hmm. is just so permanent yet so positive. Is that how you kind of felt? Was it a positive memory you were yeah, providing them? Yeah, it is. <clears throat> we just had an event with uh, Dr. Potter. He's a researcher mm-hmm. here for Alzheimer's and dementia. Really awesome, awesome person. And he kind of explained it really well, and I'll try to do it justice yeah. here. but. They're still the same person, they're just a little different right? with Alzheimer's and dementia. And, and being able to be right there with the family to hear their stories was just incredible. Wow. Just incredible. You really get to, you get to know the resident in the memory care home, but then you really get to know them before anything happened as well. It's, huh. it's really cool. And, and so what is your goal? I mean, do you have any like goals or challenges that you're facing with this type of book? Because obviously it's, it's not traditional when it comes to the Alzheimer's and dementia. It's not that clinical, scientific. It's more of that emotional, that empathetic. Yeah. Do you have any challenges that you're facing? Um, I don't know about challenges. Definitely goals, for sure. Okay. The, the overarching goal is to connect people. Okay. Um, if my mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's tomorrow, mm-hmm. um, I would love a text like this to, to realize that I'm not alone, um, mm. to realize that I am a caregiver and I accept that. But I'm not alone in that. Um, I have connections. Whatever happens tomorrow or the next day or within the next year, um, I don't want to say it can be normal, but you can find commonality in it. Well, I would, and I think that's fantastic. But couldn't you just call it a new normal? I, I think we're always, uh, to me, change is, is fearful of everybody, right? But I think if we accept that change is okay and it's the new normal because as Dr. Potter said they are who they are they're just a little different yeah I think it's this book hopefully bridges that gap between the first stage of diagnosis to Uh, that new normal it's that journey through that and that's fantastic because that's what I've noticed is especially my own grandmother who's 92 you know showing a little cognitive issues but Mm -hmm. nothing out of the ordinary for being 92 Mm -hmm. but my mom at times feels lost feels alone and I think that's important that our caregivers, whether they're family or professionals, they're connected to other people, right? And they need a team. Yeah, you said it exactly. I, I wouldn't be wouldn't be able to say it any other way. You nailed it. <laughs> so, what's one thing for our, our listeners that you want them to take away from your book? Because obviously, this is I mean, it's an incredible book. It's it's got fantastic human. You know, it almost humanizes a, a, a disease that's tr- mm-hmm. troubling. What do you want them to take away from it? One, that they're not alone. I think we've covered that yep. for sure, that mm-hmm. they're, they're not alone within this journey. And then two, maybe 
at the end of each story, there is a section where I ask the, uh, the family member that I'm interviewing, what advice would you give um, to other families that are kind of going through this? And if they can pick up even just one or two little tips and tricks cool. or little solutions or how to handle this certain situation, it's all going to vary, of course. Of course. But if they can pick up just a little bit of commonality and a little bit of tips and tricks, we'll say. All right. That's, that's, that's awesome. So that's awesome. Uh, how do they find the book? How do they find you? How do they find yeah, the book? Yeah, so um, they can go to my website, www.authortaylorhewlett.com. Um, and real quick, Hewlett is spelled H-U-L-E-T-T.com, and perfect. we will put all that information uh, in the show notes as well, too. That's perfect. They can go to that website. Um, it's an Amazon page. It's available on Amazon okay. for purchase. Um, you can also contact me directly from that website Very as well. Cool. And if they want to find out more um, you know, about maybe them coming in and you, you doing something for their family, is that always a possibility or their facility at all? Sure, yeah. I can't say that I'm a licensed professional or anything like that right. around support groups or anything, but there are options out there, and I'm happy to connect cool. people. Um, I'm just so passionate about this their stories and this disease that um, I'm happy to help whoever is in need of it. That's awesome. Well, Taylor, I can't thank you enough. Uh, this is incredible. Thank you for taking a thank few you. minutes out of your busy day. And <laughs> to our listeners, you have to check out this book. This is something that's definitely different. It definitely challenges the way we age and the way we think about Alzheimer's and dementia. So Taylor, thank you so much for, for doing such incredible work. And hopefully we'll have you back on and, and talk about your next book, maybe. <laughs> that sounds great. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening. The Mavericks want to hear from you. Visit us on Facebook and Instagram at Mavericks of Senior Living or MavericksofSeniorLiving.com and leave us your comments, questions, and ideas for future podcasts.